Greetings, people. It's Mr. PDT and Prophet C1. Yet again on another episode of the Enlightenment series. I know this one is spontaneous, and I did not even uh, I did not even tell people beforehand that I'll be bringing in C1. But be that as it may, I know it will reach the appropriate destinations and uh, the well-deserving audience. My people, as you are joining in, let me know where you're watching us from. As you gather, let me know where you're catching us live from, from so that we can delve into this discussion without further ado. And I know Siawan is one man that uh, does not have filters, and he will say it as it is, and he does not really have a reservation or compromise when it comes to standing for what he believes in, in as far as I'm also concerned. So it will be a very interesting conversation when we hear from the other side. Most of you have been asking me, most of you have been saying, this conversation is not balanced. This, your analysis is not balanced because you are more on the against side of TB Joshua. Why don't you bring someone who is also give, going to give us the other side of the story? So I decided, okay, let me bring Prophet Sia one here and we'll hear what you have to say about T.B. Joshua. Because I remember I watched one of his videos when he was saying, what was he saying? He was saying, anyone who goes against T.B. Joshua, things will not go well for them. Anyone who stands against the major prophet of God, things will not be fine for them. So my people, let me know where you're watching us from. Let me know where you're watching us from so that we can get into this conversation as quickly as possible. And as you are joining, tell me if you can hear me loud and clear. Tell me if the visuals are clear enough. And don't forget to share the broadcast because what we will discuss here, many people will benefit. What we will talk about here, there will be many gold nuggets to extract from this conversation. So let me know, my people, where you are watching us from. Let me know where you are watching us from before you engage. We have 30 seconds now to let me know if you can hear me and to let me know where you are watching us from. And 30 seconds to share this broadcast so that it can reach as many people, as many people as possible. Let me know where you're watching us from, my people, before we give Sia One the platform to share with us what he thinks about TV Joshua and what he thinks about the recent BBC documentary. Let me know. Malawi, bro, Peter Sibande here, watching you from uh, Sudan, Juba, watching you from Lusaka, Zambia, watching you from Francistown, Botswana, watching you from Zambia, that's Twambo, watching you from synagogue, Francis Opala. Are you now allowed devices in synagogue where you can just go and start broadcasting? Watching you from Bella Bella Limpopo, South Africa, watching you from Cape Town, South Africa. Loud and clear, Vincent. Watching you from Zambia, Paul Kasongo. Watching you from Zambia, capital city, Lusaka. I see you, my people. Let me know where you're catching us live from. Innocent, watching you from Zambia. It looks like we have too many Zambians in the house. Watching you from United States of America. Watching you from Lusaka, Zambia. Zambia is in the house. Watching you from United States of America. Watching you from United States of Nigeria. Watching you from uh, Lusaka, Zambia. Uh, Zambia is all over. Watching you from Uganda. The dawn of power in the building. Uh, Lindeki from Malawi. Watching you from Nigeria. I see you, my people. Let me know if you can hear me loud and clear. Watching you from Zambia. We love C1 here. Okay. Jessica, watching you from Nigeria. C1 of Zambia. Is Sia One from Zambia or from Nigeria? People, I do not know why they are claiming Sia One's nationality and why they are making him Zambia. Zambian. Kennedy, watching you from Liberia, watching you from Zimbabwe, watching you from UAE. I see you, my people, watching you from Botswana. Tech is in the house, watching you from New York City. I see you, my people, McLean Soko, watching you from Malawi, watching you from Ibom City. Watching you from DRC Congo. Ra, sound and clear, or round and clear, whatever that means. Watching you from Zambia with the dawn of power, Jagaban. 
Popo watching you from Florida, watching you from South Africa, watching you from Zambia. We are Jagabans. Okay. Watching you from Canada. Okay, my people, let's get into it. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for watching us from wherever that you're watching us from. See you one, I welcome you to the Enlightenment series. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing well, Prof. X. Uh, God bless you. How are you? Me, I'm doing very wonderful. I do not want to waste much time because I know many people are very much curious and excited. What is your relationship or what was your relationship with TB Joshua? Let's start there. TB Joshua, to me, was a prophet or is a prophet just like me. He's a, a man that uh, all of us looked up to. So long as you are a prophet in Africa, a prophet anywhere in the world, so long as you are a prophet, GB Joshua inspired you in one way or the other. So he was an inspiration to me and an inspiration to many people. That's uh, our relationship. When you watched the BBC documentary, what was your first reaction to it? <clears throat> Prof. X, uh, before we go there, I want us to understand uh, the BBC, where it is, where it's coming from. The biggest translation of Bible today is called King James. The best. If you go to so many churches today, they don't read any other version except King James. And who are these King James? King James are the royal families. The family of King Elizabeth, the family of the current king of uh, England today. They are the ones that translated King James version of the Bible. In other words, I would say they are the ones that introduced the Bible to us. Whether you like it or not, whether you believe you don't believe, it was white people that brought the Bible to us. It was no any other person. Many people, many people uh, today, when I look at them, I laugh. They say it's the Holy Spirit that brought the Bible to Africa. It was a human being that brought it. It was white people. But what we must understand is our relationship with the white. It has never been good. Our relationship with them has never been okay. BBC is at the heart of uh, the UK, England, that side. They never loved us. They are the ones that colonize us. And I'm, I, I don't know of many, many other countries, but I know of Nigeria. It was Britain that colonized Nigeria. What is the meaning of colony? They left their country, they came here and decided to rule us. They decide what happened to us. Even up to today, as I'm speaking, they decide what happened to us. They write our history for ourselves. Prof. X, can you imagine? You are doing a lot of good job here. Where are you? I watch you always. I'm always following your program. We may not agree in so many things, but there are some of them where you touch, I say, aha, uh -huh. here is, is, it is. I know many people that you have uh, talked about in your broadcast, and whatever you said about them is truth, 100%. And there are also others that I say, okay, I will not agree here. But at the end of everything, if you give your enemy the pen to write your history, do you think he's going to write anything good about you? He will never write anything good about you. What he's going to write is, ah, Prophet X does not like prophets, does not like church, does not like... He won't point at any good thing that you write, that you did. They will write a history and give to you. So this is how Britain wrote our history. When they came here, because they don't love us, they wrote 
a bad history about our ancestors, about our forefathers. They never wrote anything good about us. Even in the Bible, if you pick up the Bible today and you read it, you will see that there is nothing good, not even one single thing good that was written about Africa. Everything that was written there is bad about Africa. But you can, you can, if you read the Bible and believe it, you can understand today, or believe me today, that Jesus became what it is because of Africa. When he was born in Israel, Israel, the king, the president wanted to kill him. The mother and the father took him and brought him to Egypt in Africa. And he was saved in Africa. Without Africa, Jesus was going to be killed. But if you go to the Bible, there is nothing good written about Africa. That is where I'm going. Uh, that is where I'm going with this. Now, there is a, there is a, there is a, a place in the Bible where hunger came in the land of Israel. And Jacob and his children, they were dying of hunger. People were dying of hunger. Jacob sent his children to Egypt to go and get food. It was food that came from Africa that sustained Israel. If not, the entire nation was going to be wiped off. But if you read the Bible, there is nothing good portrayed. There is not even a single good thing portrayed and written about Africans. So these are the history written by our enemies. They came here. They took our forefathers. They raped our forefathers, our, for our mothers. They killed them. They took them to their countries, turned them to monkeys. They used them for so many things. They used them for farming, a slave trade. At the end of the day, they came and told us that these guys are ancestral spirits. They are bad spirits. There is nothing good that would come from your ancestors. That is why you see Christians who do not have understanding, Christians that have not traveled before, when they give their life to Christ, they turn their back against their ancestors. Because whatever that was written about their ancestors, we are all bad. Nothing good was written about their ancestors. Prof. X, in those days, our ancestors never had drugs. They never had paracetamol. But when they have sicknesses, they could go to the, to the bush and get leaves. When they get leaves, they mix it and cook it. They drink it. And that malaria, that headache, that problem is gone. No one documented about those leaves. No one wrote about those leaves. No one wrote anything good about them. Because the people that wrote the history are our enemies. They are the whites. They don't believe that something good would come from Africa. That is exactly what happened to TB this one. Coming to your question, when I saw the documentation where BBC was exposing TB Joshua, no, TB Joshua was a rapist, TB Joshua was a manipulator, TB Joshua was this, TB Joshua was that, TB Joshua did this, TB Joshua did that. When I, when I, I heard it, what came on my mind is that these people have come again. They have come to write another history. This man has lived his life because no matter how powerful he was, he's a human being. Everybody can make a mistake. No matter who you are, so long as there is blood and water running in your veins, you are going to make a mistake. But don't allow your mistake to overshadow the good things that you do. T.B. Joshua might have made mistakes. He's a human being. He could have a sensual urge and approach a lady. That is normal. It happens to everybody. While you are telling us that T.B. Joshua is a rapist, can you also show us how many people that he healed after being a rapist? 
When you are telling us that TB Joshua is a criminal, he's a scammer, and showing us the people he scammed and the people he did criminal activities to, can you also show us how many millions of people benefited from his humanitarian works? You understand what I'm saying? The, the BBC, what they are trying to do is to completely eradicate the good thing that he did so that they can present the bad part of him and leave it like this. So that the next generation that would come, when they hear about T.B. Joshua, they will say, oh, he was a rapist. Oh, he was a criminal. They will not hear about any good thing that he did. They are the ones that are writing the history. And it's so painful because black, black people have not waking up already to see that we are fighting with the great enemies. They are using our people to fight us. In as much as T.B. Joshua would have done this, would have done that, is it only bad thing that he did while he was on earth? T.B. Joshua, when there was an earthquake in Ecuador, he spent two million US dollars in Ecuador, not in, Af in Africa. He went, sent relief. Those things we are never recorded on 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 BBC, on Al Jazeera. You can, you will never see a documentary like that. When there was disaster in Philippines, TB Joshua sent millions of dollars, sent helicopters for rescue. BBC never did documentary. Just because uh, somebody came and said, TB Joshua raped me. And I'm going to tell you something. Most of those people, that, uh, especially that woman from South Africa, that, that one with the big nash like this, that one is a prostitute. She, she encountered me already. I've, I'm going to share with you as we proceed so that you know that those of you that are believing whatever you are hearing from BBC, it means your brain is not okay. I'm not against what they did. Prof. X, history must be balanced. When Jesus was born, according to the Bible, those of you that read the Bible and believe the Bible, when Jesus was born, when Jesus was born, the king, the president of Israel gave a decree that because a boy was born and he was born a king and they were looking for him, they couldn't find him. He said, Every child that will be born in Israel, so long as he's a male, he must be killed. I don't know if you read the Bible. It's there. And children were slaughtered. Innocent children were slaughtered. They were killed in Israel because of Jesus. And today, that story, people don't even preach it in the church. You see our men and women of God from Africa telling our mothers and our fathers, our brothers and sisters, let's go to Israel. When we go to Israel, there is God in Israel. You can even see men and women of God coming from countries that need prayer, praying for Israel. The foundation of this Israel was laid in blood. The blood of innocent, innocent children. Imagine if that was done in Africa. Imagine if there was a king in Africa during the time of our ancestors that he would slaughter the whole children that male children that we are born in Africa. Believe me, the history that they were going to give to us, that city would have been like no one would go to that city. But today, of all the crime that Israel has committed and they're committing, people are still flocking to Israel to go and receive Jesus, to go and receive miracle, to go and pray to God. Because of what? White people wrote a history. Tell us to say, okay, this thing happened. Our king ordered the assassination of innocent children. But later, this good thing happened in Israel. People do not go to Israel because children were slaughtered. People go to Israel because of the good things that we are written in the Bible about Israel. Both lies and the truth. If they wrote something good 
about Africa. Many of us today, if they wrote something good about our ancestors, when we heard the documentary of TV Joshua, we are going to believe. Gaddafi is an example of what I'm talking about. Gaddafi was running a united Africa. If Gaddafi was alive by now, Africa would have been on a greater height. They wrote a bad image. They presented a bad image. And they killed Gaddafi. Of all the good things that Gaddafi did, when Gaddafi was alive in, in Libya, when you want to marry, they pay the tour for you if you don't have money. They were giving houses. You know, if you don't have a house, they give you houses. Children that we are going to school, we are getting salary. They killed him. They wrote a bad history about him and they killed him. Go to Libya today. It's a sorry sight. They are fighting. The same people that didn't write anything good about Gaddafi can never write any good thing about you. That is why we as Africans, we must rise up now and open our eyes, saying to ourselves that God is in us. God is not in Israel. No white man can tell us about Jesus because they don't know anything about righteousness. I can go on and on and on and on telling you the things that came into my mind the time I saw the documentary of TV. Even men of God, we are celebrating. You are celebrating because they said the man slept with, I, I think I counted like four ladies, four or three ladies that confessed. I know men of God that have slept with more than 50, 60 ladies. Hundred, I know those that cannot preach until they sleep with ladies. They we are celebrating. <laughs> a man Yes, a man that died at the age of 60 something years and only three or four women came out and said, he slept with me, he slept with me. And there is uproar everywhere. It's not God. It's a human being. We should even clap for him because he controlled himself. You don't understand what goes on. Like, for example, that lady that uh, was confessing from South Africa, the one with the big nash like this, that one is an attention seeker. I was preaching in Limpopo in my church. I have the videos and the, and, the, and, and, the, and the pictures. She drove all the way from Johannesburg and came to my church in South, in South Africa. When I finished preaching and performing miracles, and I was about to come to Nigeria. That was on Sunday. I had a flight on Tuesday. So I had to go and sleep in uh, Johannesburg so that I could catch my flight coming to Nigeria. You know, after the service, that lady, oh, see, I want, uh, I came all the way from uh, uh, Johannesburg. I heard about you. So I came to witness the miracle. I have seen the miracle. Please, can you help me? What, what? I said, oh, you came all the way from Johannesburg. Okay, I'm going to Johannesburg. How are you, how are you moving? He said, no, I'm also going to Johannesburg. I said, we went together. When we arrived together, it was very late uh, in the night. And uh, we slept in a hotel at, uh, at the airport. I am her. If I was, um, sorry about that, you know, Nigeria. Nigeria is uh, <laughs> light comes, light goes. But I will be speaking, light will be coming here now. Okay. So if I, if we slept together in a hotel room. If I was, a, an ordinary prophet because there are so many prophets that felt victim of that lady that lady can manipulate she's a sexual sex pre predictor she loves sex <laughs> if i was this prophet an ordinary prophet i was going to sleep with her i'm telling you in the same hotel it just as most of this thing i look at people when they talk i laugh in the same hotel, the reason why I can't is because I have sex 12 times in a year. Only but 12 times in a year. This we are going to talk about next time. This is the rule from where I'm coming from. If not, I was going to sleep with that lady. She's aware. You can invite her in your program. Bring us together. We share evidence. You see for yourself what I'm talking about. I just kept quiet. Now, there's a group of people 
that BB, BBC brought to defend TV Jeshua. They didn't do investigation. If they did investigation, they would feature just that type of a person. This is a person that go from man, uh, from one man of God to another man of God looking for sex. From one king to another king looking for sex. From one popular person to another popular person looking for sex. These are the people that are coming out to say, TBS was slept with me. Maybe you no, said, excuse me. But still, wait, let me ask you something. Because you slept in the same hotel, how does that qualify as to be someone who probably wanted to sleep with you? Maybe you just shared the same hotel. Did she make any advances on you or something? Are you Is implying she, that she tried to get you? Of course. Many things happened that night. When I tell you that this person is a sexual person, I think she sent to sleep with men of God. I, I can assure you, all the way, somebody who drove all the way from Johannesburg to come to Limpopo to meet me. And after meeting me, witnessing the miracle, we went together. She stays in Johannesburg. She had a place she was staying in Johannesburg, but she slept in the hotel with me. At night, I know what happened. But I said, no, I have sex 12 times in a year, once in a month. That is my rule. That is where I'm coming from. If not because of that, I was going to sleep with her. And she was going to mention me among the people she has slept with. Because I've been hearing her from here and here going. I slept with this person. I slept with this person. I was waiting for her to mention me so that I can bring evidence. Because even our chat is dead. So you didn't, didn't, you didn't do it. You didn't do it. No, 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 no. I'm not a sex person. You can just, uh, <laughs> you can hear many things that people say about me. You can hear, see, your one is a satanist. That one, you will hear it everywhere. See, your one is a satanist. You will also hear people saying, uh, see, your one is a, is a, what, many other things, scammer, false prophet, many things they will say, but you will not hear somebody saying, see, your one raped me or see a one slept with me or see a one because from where i'm coming from we we are permitted to have sex 12 times in a year once in a month so that also has helped me to run away from things like that if not i was going to sleep with that lady and these are the type of people that uh bb just bbc brought to defend tb Joshua. So okay. we ask what are the chances that when she went to TB Joshua, TB Joshua couldn't resist and she whatever she said was the truth as to what happened between her and TB Joshua? It can be possible. It can be possible that she went to TB Joshua and maybe tried to seduce TB Joshua and slept with TB Joshua. We are human beings. We are not uh, we are not wood. There is blood running in our system even to the person that is typing right now saying hey false prophet the same thing he's accusing me of maybe see a one slept with a lady he has done it more than 20 times what is the difference between me and you <laughs> but so you this are... is what people don't understand people do not understand that men of god are human you come to them you seduce them you sleep with them then you go again and start broadcasting it they are not wood. There are many of them that don't have self-control. When you go to them, you sleep with them, you have sex with them. Look, it happens. It's normal. It's you know normal. what? You know what, Siawan? I do not personally. I do not have a problem with 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 you guys having consensual activities or intercourse with these women. My only problem is. When you start forcing them, when you start, you know, forcing yourselves on them, like in the cases of this these young people that came out, they when it was not consensual. It was did not force anybody. Eh? No, 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 no. It didn't force anybody. My brother, if you go to South Africa, uh, okay, you are in South Africa. I don't know if you are in South Africa or Zimbabwe, and you go to the jail, you will see that 50% of our brothers languishing in jail are there because of lies that women gave against them. A woman will come to you and say, okay, I want you to sleep with me. 
you sleep with her today, tomorrow she went. Or tomorrow buy me this, or buy me that. And you refuse to do that. Automatically they come and say, hey, he has raped me, he has raped me. Before you know it, because men in this generation, this is also what white people brought to us. Men in this generation are venerable. Before you know it, boom, in prison. There are so many of them like that. I can swear, I can guarantee you that Tibi Joshua did not force anybody for sex. Who is she? Even the <laughs> even the, the the one, the what is that one? The one with the Busikat eye. The one that has Busikat eye. What is her name? Who was saying she used to work with Tibi Joshua? Bisola. I mean, look, if you go to synagogue, unless you have not been to synagogue, you will see thousands of people. Beautiful women. You mean to be a we we leave them and go and force a pussycat eye to sleep with. Then it means to be a sure was if he did that, then he had mental problems. He didn't do it. All these things, I've given you an example of what happened to me. All these things are things that we are created by BBC, white people, to tarnish the image of a black man. That's all. I want to ask you a question. Yes. You said earlier the BBC was only focusing on the wrong that TB Joshua was doing. And yes. before we conclude, we should also look at the good things TB Joshua did. So is it justified for TB Joshua to abuse these young ladies as long as he gives people bags of rice? bags of indomie and bags of milly meal and cooking oil. Are you saying that as long as the ends justify the means, then we let should... Me tell, let me tell you. Let me no tell you this. Persecute I, Joshua. I, Prophet Siawa, mm. we tell you that Stephen Joshua did not abuse any of those ladies. If he did, it is wrong. I don't support sexual abuse in any way by anyone. But I want to also, I've given you so many examples, too many examples that will make you understand that the white does not like the black. And for them, nothing good must come from the black. This is a guarantee. You can you can do your research, you can try whatever you can in politics, they decide who to rule. Even if like for example, here in Nigeria or there in South Africa or anywhere, go around and see that whatever is happening in that country is being engineered by the whites. They don't want anything good in Africa. And that is why. Many people do not know that the essence of bringing religion to us in Africa was not for us to go to heaven or for us to succeed. It's another way of enslaving us. It's another way of making us comfortable in poverty while they are enjoying riches. I, I was in, uh, when I was deported from Zambia, I went to South Africa. When I arrived at South Africa, I didn't have a lot of money because by then I was waiting for my lawyer, Mr. Ngoma from Zambia, to retrieve my money from Zambia through my young brother and send it to me. The first day I approached uh, Mr. Makura, I don't know if it's still the mayor. Is it the mayor of Kauten? I forgot it. I, yes, I approached him, David Makura. David Makura, through his sister-in-law. And I said to him, look, I'm see one. I'm coming from Zambia. I was deported. But I have money that I want to invest here in uh, South Africa because I want to stay in South Africa. So because he's a white, a, a black person, he understood me. I was not dressing well. You know, I'm not a I'm, I'm not a person of suit and tie, all these things. I was just wearing slippers, shorts, and a t-shirt. So he understood me. He said, okay, I'm going to introduce you to a lawyer that is going to help you 
with investment. And uh, this was at Salam office in, uh, in Santa. The following day, he introduced me to the lawyer. We went to the lawyer. It's a white man of Sangla. When we arrived there, he said to me, what is your name? I said, my name is uh, Prophet Siawan. He said, no, your original name. So I gave him my name. He said, ah, okay. he said, okay, what do you want? I said, I have some money that is coming. My lawyer will be sending. I want to invest it in this country because I'm now in this country. I want to stay in this country. If you see how he treated me, that guy, and he's a man of God, he's a pastor, and he's a lawyer. He treated me like a madman. You know why? Because I was not dressing well. The amount of money I was mentioning was not showing on my body. It was not showing on what I was wearing. So he, he didn't even shake my hand. Okay, okay, no problem. Bring, you the, uh, bring your bank statement and so on and tell me what you, what you want to do on Wednesday or on Friday. On Friday, we printed the bank statement and went to him. I was still dressed tattered. I was still wearing, you know, with slippers and so on. When he took the bank statement and he saw the amount of money that was there, and he looked at me, you know what he did? If you have been to some lamp office, you you know that there are, there are levels of boardrooms that are there. You are taken into any of those boardrooms depending on who you are and what you brought. That man took me to the, to the boardroom, and in that boardroom, it was just full of whites. Then, he said to me, we are going to start this meeting, but before we start this meeting, let us pray. Let us start the meeting with prayer. I am a pastor. I laughed. Because I am a man of wisdom, an intelligent man. You cannot cheat me with Bible. You cannot cheat me with prayer. The first day he saw me, he didn't talk about God. He didn't want to. He didn't want to take me to the boardroom. He didn't even want to take me to the reception. But because he has sent the bank statement, he wants us to pray. I told him, I'm here for business. I'm not here for prayer. What am I trying to say? The Bible says, blessed are the poor in heart or in the spirit for the, for heaven is theirs they will go to heaven because they are poor white man wrote it but the white man that wrote that thing in that scripture is not poor he's very rich he's very wealthy if you are poor you go to his house he will send dogs to chase you here on earth white man does not entertain the poor they don't want to have anything to do with the poor but they are telling you that because you are poor, you go to heaven. <laughs> Does that make sense? It doesn't make sense. So you will see that religion was brought to colonize Africa. And it's unfortunate that us in Africa here, we grab it and we are holding it like this. That is why today is Wednesday. If you go to some people's church, they are praying. They are not working. They are not doing anything. These are people that came on Sunday and presented the file and said, I'm looking for a job. Man of God prayed for that document, that file on Sunday and told them, okay, the job has been given to you. On Wednesday, you are supposed to go and look for that job because that job will not come from heaven. You bring that file back on Wednesday for prayer. That's why Africa is praying. Africa is poor. Africa will remain poor because we are praying. This is what you have to know before you, you start jumping up, before you, 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 uh, before you start, hey, hallelujah, we are going to heaven. Heaven is mine. Heaven is not for the poor. Heaven is for the rich. Let me give you an example. In your church today, those of you, I don't know the church where you are coming from. Maybe you are coming from Winner's Chapel. You are coming from Deeper Life Church. Choosing. 
Roman Catholic, Anglican, mention them, or you are coming from any of the churches. Have you ever seen a rich person in your church taking the back row? I mean, even if it comes to service begins at 6 a.m., the rich man comes to church at 12 p.m., ushers will locate him where he is and take him to the front. If the rich are occupying the front row here on earth, who told you that it's poor that will go and occupy front row in heaven? So this is where we have a problem. Africa is messed up. And I can tell you, uh, uh, brother, prophets, it will take time for us to get things right. I'm not against prayer. I'm not against uh, Bible entirely. I'm not against, because if you come to my church here, you know where I pray, I preach Bible. But most of the things written in the Bible, we are written to manipulate the poor. That we are written to manipulate Africa. Most of the things written in the Bible, we are written against Africa. How can you explain to me that why Satan was in heaven? He was a white man. He was the one that was leading the praise. He was morning star. Morning star means he was so beautiful. In fact, he was an express copy of God and Jesus. The day he was chased down, according to the Bible, by N.J. Michael, was the day he became a black man. Was the day they gave him a horn. Was the day they gave him a tail. Was the day they gave him a big muscle. How do you explain that? Africa people must wake up. If you are watching this clip, anywhere you are, it doesn't matter what. I've given you an example. In your church, does the poor get the back row? They don't. African politicians, the criminals that we have in Africa that we call politicians, looters, election regards, people <laughs> that loot our resources, they will finish looting our resources when they come to church. You that is righteous will sit back, 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 and usher will leave you there with your righteousness and poverty. Carry that politician criminal and bring them to the front. When man of God preach, preach, he will give them the microphone. I'm talking about African politicians. They will use the microphone. They are criminal. They will use the microphone and say, Praise the Lord! You that is poor is stayed behind shouting, Hallelujah! <laughs> so tell me, tell me, I mean, use your brain and discover that these things we are not for us. The Bible says it will be difficult for the rich to enter the kingdom, to go to heaven. That it will be easy for the poor to go to heaven. That's why Christians are so poor. If you come to Nigeria today, in so many churches in Nigeria, especially these righteous churches, they are poor. When I say poor, they are their definition of poverty. Because why? They believe that when they die and go to heaven, we are that white man introduced to death. White man tells you when you die, a poor person. Your riches is in heaven. Oh, you're in heaven. That place is made of gold. That place is made of silver. You will not lack anything here. Just die poor and go there. While you are dying poor, white man is eating your resources. Here in Nigeria, white man do not want our oil to rest. In Zimbabwe, white man does not want their gold to rest. In South Africa, White man does not want their diamond to rest. They are after riches here on earth, but they want us to die and go to heaven to possess our riches. If you believe it, it means you are a mad person. The man of God that tells you to say, hey, prepare yourself, you, when you die, you go to heaven. When you, when you, when you die, every, that man of God don't even want to die. How can a man of God tell you that Jesus is coming very soon, but it's peace? Sleeping with his wife and making children. Him himself doesn't want to go to heaven. Who, are, who is he giving birth to those children? 
Your riches is in heaven. None of God has five private jets here on earth. You as a member, you want to go to heaven, but your man of God doesn't want to go to heaven. Your wealth is in heaven. That is where everything is stocked for you. Man of God is building schools here on earth. Who is he building those schools for? You don't want to prepare to have dominion on earth. It's all about heaven, heaven at last. It means you're a mumu. It means you're a fool. So in all this, when a white man come and sees somebody that is speaking the way I'm speaking, they don't preach Bible to us. They know that we know the truth. Even in that same Bible, it says we shall know the truth. And the truth will do what? Set you free. Person come to you and brought the Bible. And he tells you, eh, this Bible, it is written. Uh, heaven, blessed are the poor because heaven is there. Uh, money is the root of all evil. Money is the root of all evil. All the, you know Christians are fools. When I talk about this, they, they change it. They say, no, it's not talking about money. He said the root of money. What is the difference between uh, the love of money? What is the difference between money and the love of money? <laughs> Prof. X, uh, you don't love money. Tell me a single person on earth who doesn't love money. Even God himself loves money. That is why after preaching, you give offering. Every Satan himself loves money. That's why when you go to perform sacrifice, you throw money or you buy things. Everybody loves money. Whether it's the, uh, the love of money is the root of all evil or money is the root of all evil, it still comes to the same thing. Somebody tells you money is the root of all evil or the love of money is the root of all evil. He wrote it in the Bible and brought that Bible to you. Gave you that Bible. You will not say, okay, I'm going. He will give you that Bible and open his hand and say, pay me for this Bible. You pay him for that Bible. It's rich. That love of, that is, that root of all evil is what you have given to him. And he has given you Bible. Does it make sense? We must start waking up as Africans. By the time we start waking up, if you come to my, my ministry here in Oweri, every Sunday, you will see now that we are discussing even before this broadcast. You will see tangible men and women of this country. They are coming because they are learning. Their eyes are opening. Their brain is opening. They are understanding that on this earth, we must have dominion. No one has ever gone to heaven and come back and tell us that there is heaven. No one, anyone that say he has been there before and come back is a lie. No one has gone there and tell us, oh, there is hell. No, you are preparing for something that you are not sure of, something you are not aware of, something that you're sure of, you lose it. Go to different churches today. People are doing fasting, 41 days fasting. Every day they are in church. Every day they are in church. When are you going to have opportunity to work? When we finish all these prayers that we are praying, when we finish all these things that we are doing, as a country in Nigeria, as a country in Africa, we do not even have enough money to sponsor our national budget. We still go to China. The people that are not praying, the people that don't know Jesus, we still go to them and borrow money to finance our country. When are we going to work on? White man will never write anything good about you and the me. That you must know. What they wrote about our ancestors are all evil. Let me conclude by saying this. Let me give you an example. Let me conclude by saying this. White man came here and he introduced the Roman Catholic Church. And he introduced the worshipping of Mary. Mary statue. Catholic, because also they are mumu. They you say are talking, we are, are not Catholics now. You don't know the word that comes from Roman Catholics. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I say that I love them always. I love them, but me, I don't have, I don't hide anything. I say what I want. Now, they say, no, we are not, uh, we are not uh, worshiping Mary. We are honoring Mary. Now, what man brought that image? That's Mary, Mary image. 
and paint it white and paint it blue and give to a Catholic person or a Christian believer in Africa. A Christian believer will not have a problem going to New Town to pray through that thing that was molded with cement and they painted with paint by human being like me and you. Most of these people that mold this thing have seen mortars, have seen where they are molding the image of a uh, Virgin Mary, image of Jesus before. I've seen a man that is married to three wives. He's molding that thing. When he finish molding it, Catholic will come and buy it and they start worshiping it. Follow where I'm going. They won't have a problem with it because it was introduced by a white man. Uh, the, if you come to Nigeria today, one of the problems we have in Nigeria is Dangote. Dangote, number one, is not a Christian. He's a Muslim. He don't believe in Jesus. But he is the largest owner of cement industry here in Nigeria. And I can assure you that he's a greedy person. Because those people that we are doing cement and so on and so forth, they are, all their cement industry we are closed just for Dangote alone to start producing cement. Now, a man like that produces cement. A member of Catholic goes and buys that cement or a mortar goes and buys that cement produced by somebody who is not a Christian. Now, this guy that is molding this thing may be a womanizer. Follow my way. He may be a drunkard. Follow my way. He may be a murderer, an ex-convict. Follow my way. But because he has molded in the same hand, maybe he was just coming down from, from a woman, from fornicating or adultery. He used the same hand. He used that hand to remove condom or use it to do anything. He used that same hand to mold that image. After molding it, remember the owner of the cement is not a believer, it's not a child of God, it's not a Christian, it's a Muslim. The mortar is a fornicator or adulterer. Then after that, they go and buy paint. Who produced the paint, the blue paint and the white paint? You discover that most of the paint production companies today are not believers. They are unbelievers. Why they are smoking? They are missing the paint. Some of them are even there with a woman pressing the bread. They are mixing the paint. Are you hearing what I say? They are committing sin while they are mixing the paint. After mixing that paint, somebody will go and buy that paint and paint that Virgin Mary and paint that Jesus Christ. Some they paint Jesus white. He's on the cross like this. They go and worship that. They don't find anything evil or bad about worshiping that thing that was produced by unbelievers because it was introduced to us by the whites. Now, the same person will come to my house and see a very big tree or her tree. He will see me kneel down in that or her tree and be talking to my ancestors because my father told me that this tree here this is where i used to do my offer this is where i used to do my oak this is where i used to do my things so anything you want come to this tree and pray it will answer so they will find me doing there or they will catch me with a snap hot drink pouring in that or her and saying I need a car. I need a house. They will cry. Hey, see how one is worshipping idol. See how one is worshipping Satan. People come and see you. Oh, he's worshipping the tree. Now, the tree, which was created by God naturally without a sin, and the cement that was produced using Dangote cement, which one has power for? I mean, which one has power? Which one is sin free? Something that was created by human beings or something that was created by God? Which one? So 
they told us that our ancestors we are worshipping trees. And because they were worshipping trees, they didn't do the right thing. That is why Africa is poor. That is why you are dying. That is why you need deliverance in your family. They will remove you from worshipping the tree and bring you to worshipping the cement. Is it not jumping from frying pan to fire? <laughs> uh, from egg. Is it not jumping from... It's even better you worship the tree than to worship cement. Because tree is naturally made by God and it has a living in it. But the cement was produced by an unbeliever. This is the history that they wrote about our ancestors. That is why when you go to church, uh, what you are going through is that you are suffering from ancestral spirit. So therefore, we are going to family deliverance. They will invite you for family deliverance. They will cut the tree that your father left for you. If you go to my village today, we no longer have big trees. Prayer people have cut all the trees. Nigeria, where I'm coming from, in Nemo State, we used to have Oji. Oji is a very big uh, shed. God blessed our community a lot. Every village had at least one or two. Those oceans, it gives shade to the community. It's very big. And there is a fruit that God blessed us with. That fruit is called uh, is, 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 that fruit is called uh, Odara. In my village, we used to have it. Every community used to have it. When you go to fetch water from the stream and you are tired, Odara falls. You sit under Odara and eat Odara and proceed with your journey. But today, there is no single ocean in my community. Prayer people have cut it because men of God told them that your problem is from the tree. They cut the tree. Any moments from now, by the time that uh, uh, climate change will reach Nigeria, we will finish because we don't have trees again. All the trees are cut by prayer people. You cut the prayer uh, the trees and then you are worshipping cement. I, it means that you are, not, you, are, you are not wise. So this is the history. This is exactly what they try to do about Tibidus. There is no single black man that have done impact that has left the history that the next generation will come and they read it and get inspired. Everything they write about us are the same thing they wrote about our ancestors. In olden days, our ancestors used to live up to 100 years, 90 years, 150 years. Because when they get sick, they go to the bush, like I said when we are starting. They pick leaves. They know the leaf that cures malaria. They know the leaves that cures West pain. They know the leaves that cure so many sicknesses and diseases. But no one documented any of those healing. No one documented any of those leaves. They tell you that everything our ancestors did, we are bad. This is our generation. TV Jesuit generation has come. What they are writing about their generation is the same thing they wrote about our father. They can write something that the next generation will come and read and say, wow, Africa did good. They will always write something bad about us. India mean everything he did was bad. Uh, 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 what is his name? Gaddafi, everything he did was bad. Kwame Nkrumah, everything he did was bad. All great leaders in Africa, they were dictators. But the, the family of the king in England has been dictated from generation to generation and no one is talking about it. We are in trouble. But I'm praying that one day our eyes will open. One day things will change in Africa. That is why I prophesy a one. Whatever it will take, for us to liberate Africa, I will do it. I hear that part, my brother, when you are, and I actually agree with you, when you talk about the white Western media propagating a position against African icons or black icons. But putting that into consideration, it's a question I'm throwing at you now as we are wrapping up. What if everything, what if, everything that was reported by bbc is true what if tb joshua actually committed all those atrocities would you still have the same view of tb joshua 
holding everything else constant, would you still have the same respect, honor for TB Joshua if he actually committed all those atrocities as they were laid out in that documentary? Yes, I will still respect him. I will still honor him because it's not his. Let me tell you, everyone can be tempted. Before we are prophets, we are human. If he did all those things, he did it as a human. But there are things he did more than the bad thing that he did. I always say this. This happens to everybody. But all you have to try your possible best to do is don't allow your evil to be bigger than your good. So long as you're a human being with flesh and blood, you can never be perfect. You will never be perfect. There must be a place where you'll be caught in a bit. And people must not discredit, discredit you because of that place. They must also look at the place, your strength, where you did work. From generation to generation, I will honor TV Joshua. From generation to generation, I will hold him in a very high esteem. It's better than all the people that call themselves white. Okay, see how white people are propagating bonke. If you talk about bonke to an African today, you, 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 they will think that you are talking about God. They will say, hey, wow, that man was so powerful. That man was so good. So Bonke came to Nigeria several times. Bonke even met our president here in Nigeria, Olusegu Abbasanjo. Our resources, our money was given to him. Bonke went with everything. What did the Bonke do for Nigeria? What did the Bonke do for Africa? Nigeria is suffering from Boko Haram. How much? has been in his sent to fight Boko Haram in Nigeria. When whatever that is going on in Nigeria, have you heard that uh, uh, Bonke donated this to Nigeria? No. But T.B. Joshua did that. T.B. Joshua only didn't help Nigeria, but he helped the world. But today, white people have propagated Bonke as righteous. Bonke made billions of dollars from Nigeria. I can assure you that. But today in Nigeria, there is no single industry. Not even a single industry. Not even a single industry here in Nigeria. We didn't benefit anything. The highest he did was to open Bible school in Nigeria and continue brainwashing our people. Brainwashing and brainwashing and brainwashing and brainwashing and brainwashing. We didn't benefit anything from him. There are so many to be mentioned. Mm. What? Please, my brother, we must be careful of these guys. What man tells you, oh, very soon when you die, you are going to, this Bible is going to lead you to a place, build of gold, a place where you will not die again. You will never be hungry. This and that and that. It's already say you will go there through the Bible without a visa. But if you want to go to their country, here on earth, where there is death, if you want to go to their country, let's say, for example, Rome, Italy, the people that brought us from the country, they will tell you, oh, you will die when you go to heaven. Yeah, everything will be okay. It's free of charge. And for you to go there, this Bible, you will lead you there. Read it every day. When you die, you will go to heaven. But now that you are alive, you want to go to their country, you need a visa. <laughs> you know how much a visa is. And at, at, at some time, you even pay for visa, they will deny you entry into their country. Here on earth, they don't want you to enter their country, but they have given you something that will lead you to a place built with gold. And you believe. It means you are a fool. It means, it means you are not wise. As we conclude, let us have it at the back of our mind that the people that introduce Christianity to us do not love us. So when we read, we must use our brain. There are things we are going to read 
in the Bible, and we'll say, uh -uh. <laughs> here, <Yeah. laughs> there is a manipulation here. This one is not for us. You put it aside. That's how I read Bible myself. Because many people don't understand Bible. Bible is not holy. No, holy Bible. No, there is nothing holy about Bible. Bible is a constitution that guides the Christian religion. It's a constitution. It was written by human beings. Not God, not Jesus, not Holy Spirit. It's a constitution. It's like a country. Every country has the constitution. As you are living in this country, you do this. You are looking at the constitution. You do this. You are looking at the constitution. That is what it is. That is what the Bible is. It's not holy. If Bible is holy, all our presidents in Africa, majority of them that are Christians, would have been dead by now. Because when they are being sworn in, they carry Bible. If Bible is holy, they use Bible to lie. When I take over, and I will do this, I will do this. When you give them power, you give them power as sheep. When they take over, they become lion. They throw away the Bible. So it's not holy. As a matter of fact, if you do your research very, very well, you will know that majority of the Bible, the scripture is produced by the Zondavan. Zondavan publishers. Zondavan also publish Quran. They cook the wood in the same pot. The same wood they used to write Bible, in the same wood they used to write Quran. They cook them in the same Bible, in the same pot. Grind them, mash them, and now separate them. Right here, Bible, right here, Quran. So it can never be holy. It's a constitution that guides a Christian, we are to go and we are not to go. And if you understand that it's a condition, you understand that it, there are mistakes can be there. People say, ah, it's written by the Holy Spirit, so therefore there can never be mistake there. You are, you, are, you are killing yourself. Have you seen Holy Spirit before? Have you seen a publishing company owned by a Holy Spirit? No, it was written by human. King James is translated. They were slave traders. They were buying and selling human beings. They are the ones that translated it. So tell me how they will translate something better that will favor blacks. Then. The more you understand this, the more your brains open. Not everything you read, you grab it. Sometimes you read, you say, this one, yes. That one will not work for me. A last question, maybe. Let me bring this whole documentary of TB Joshua close to home. I'm sure it's easy for us to talk about it because none of us have relatives or anyone that we know personally that came out as a victim from that documentary. If it was one of your daughters or your sisters that featured in that documentary, explaining what they went through in the hands of T.B. Joshua. Would you still doubt them or would you still have the same view about T.B. Joshua as you have now? All my children, I know their character. I know the one that lied. I know the one that said the truth. From the documentary, you can see that the majority of those people are liars. <laughs> I know my children. They, they, they can come to me and they say, Hey, daddy, this and that. When I look at them, I know the one that tells me the truth. If it's coming from the one that tells me the truth, I will know that it's the truth. If it's coming from the ones that lies, I say, aha, you have come again with your story. Those ones that feature there, they are storytellers. Take my words anywhere. Storytellers. I'll give you an example. How can you get somebody that you know from South Africa? And tell her that woman was uh, was uh, also black to me a king a few months ago. King of Zulu. People should not forget easily. She has black so many uh, Pastor Chris. You know, she has black so many great people. So long as she sees that you are great, she will black. So somebody like that can come and say something, then I believe. I can't believe because I know her character. Most of those people that featured in TV Joshua documentary with BBC, they are liars. They are liars. Majority of them are jealous. Jealous 
Jealousy is dangerous, my friend. <laughs> I've dealt with jealous people before. I understand their character. In conclusion, what is your your final words to the followers of TB Joshua and to those who were touched by this documentary? Followers of TB Joshua, let me tell you this. Any fruit, any tree that bears good fruit will always be attacked. Don't be shaky. Don't shake. Don't even bother yourself about anything. If your father raped uh, three women or four women and five women, according to what BBC was saying, it's still your father. What you must look at and ask yourself why is because why didn't they give us the good part of him? Why didn't they concentrate so much on the good part of him? I know my father. I know his weakness. And I can never run away from him because of his weakness. And the fact that he has more strength than weakness. Ah, I said, I'm not going to run away. Even those that are making the documentary, those that are making the documentary, they have done worse than what they reported that TV was done. That I can tell you. They have done worse. Why have they not told us how all of a sudden the United Kingdom is having, England is having the biggest gold reserve in the world? Where did they get the gold from? Have you ever seen a documentary on BBC about how our forefathers and our ancestors were killed, were raped? If you make a mistake and find that video and post it on Facebook, Facebook will block your page. They don't want those things to be aired, but they are airing things for black people. <laughs> okay, so now what's your advice now as well to us who are standing with the victims, who are standing with BBC, who still believe that TV Joshua is a native doctor and he committed all those atrocities? What I want to advise you is that white people don't love you and they can never tell you this no but my views okay. about tb joshua are not based on the documentary per se my views about yeah. tb joshua i always had them reserved before the documentary came what what we are the reservations that is a false prophet he is nothing of god he's a native doctor why there is nothing that you practice. To start off, if we are to look at doctrine, we can't even listen to the message according to TB yeah. Joshua that is an, in alignment with the so-called gospel, as he claimed. Tell me one. Tell me one message he preached that is not aligned to the word of God. I can tell you these false prophecies because I, you can't even listen to TB Joshua's messages and connect the dots. The things that he said, no. the same things that Jeremiah Omoto said, they don't add up. But you must sit down and listen to his message. His message is all about love. That's where the danger is. When people use the message of love to cover for their atrocities and use charity to cover for their atrocities. So I, 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 I reserve myself and prevent myself everyone, from being... Everyone has atrocities, including me and you. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's no way I can force myself on a woman. Are you sure that TB Joshua forced himself to a woman? Because the victims came out and they spoke about it. My word somebody can, TB also, somebody can also come out tomorrow and say, Prof. S forced himself on me. You are not aware. Do you know how many people that are in prison today, especially in South Africa, because of wrong imprisonment? Yeah, there are cases of that nature, but the one of TB Joshua is quite extreme. How can we have a lineup of girls? that are all saying the same thing with one voice one million people can come and give the same jesus when he was here on earth according to if you're a christian if you're a Christian, when he was here on earth there was a lot of things accused him of which he didn't but not, rape. not rape 
Mm? Not at, not rape, not adultery. None of the things that TB Joshua is being accused of today are related to any of the accusations or you know persecutions that they were laying on Jesus Christ's head. They were only going against Jesus Christ because he was preaching the truth. He was standing for the truth. That was his only they crime. Were, they were going against TB Joshua because he was doing the right thing. How many people did he heal? Say the truth from the bottom of your heart. Say the truth. Forget about calm down. Calm down. Say the truth. How many people did you watch that he healed? I don't believe all those healing things that they do on the TV. How many people? You don't believe in healing. How many people did he have? How many people was he paying school fees? I can ask you a counter question to that one. People like okay. Pablo Escobar. You know Pablo Escobar, one of the biggest okay. notorious you know, drug kingpin from Colombia. He used to help people maybe 10 times fold than TB Joshua. He used to do big extravagant projects for the poor, for the needy in Colombia. But the question is, where was he getting that money? From selling drugs to young boys, to young children, to young girls. So we can't really justify that as a charitable event or as something that is coming from a good place or from a good heart. He was only doing this and marinating the society so that when time for trouble come, there will be people rooting for him and defending him. When the international authorities were hunting down Pablo Escobar, they couldn't find him in Colombia because he had bought the affection of all the people that were staying in Colombia. He could ride from this house to the next house, to the third house, to the fourth house, because he built all those houses for these people. That's the same with TV Joshua. He was doing so many good things for so many people, so that when a time was, like this was, he was doing so many good things. People right? defending him. He was doing so many good things, right? Yeah. Why are we not concentrating on those so many good things? But now when we look you know, at you are doing, from those X, good you yourself, you know that you are doing so many good things yourself. Yeah. You know that you have saved so many people. I know many people that you are going to be scammed in churches, but through mm -hmm. your broadcast, their eyes open, they were not scammed. I know many churches that you shook, even here in Nigeria, you shook those churches from doing the wrong thing. There, there were many changes in people's life, right? But very soon, someone will come with the bad side of you and say, Prof. S slept with me. But you're a human being. You have penis. You can sleep. It's human nature. It's temptation. It can catch you and you fail to handle it. That is human nature. I caught Prophet S drinking in the bar. Now, when all these things come, how would you feel if people would forget all the good things that you did and concentrate on the bad thing that you did? Yeah, of course, I will find it is because people have, Somebody has written me before. He was about to give a donation to, to a church. <laughs> and he said, he was watching your broadcast. And because of what you said, he withdrew from that. You saved many people from losing money. But very soon, people will not talk about it. People are going to say, Prof. S, he did this, he did that. How will you feel when people concentrate on the bad part of it? I tell you, why is Israel, Israel great today? As we speak today, me and you here speaking, Israel is committing the greatest atrocity in human in 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 the history of humanity today. But can I tell you this? There are Christians today that are leaving Nigeria, leaving South Africa, leaving Botswana, leaving Zambia, going to Israel to go and pray, saying that Israel is holy, a country that is committing atrocity is holy. Why? Because the people that wrote the history wrote their bad and they wrote their good. In fact, the, the things that they did, if I was to write it, no one was ever going to stay foot in Israel. But because they concentrated on the good part of Israel, 
they say this is where Jesus was buried. People go there, even if they are not sure. Even if they are not sure. I'm telling you, even if they are not sure that that is where Jesus was buried, they go there, they pick sand from there because of a history someone wrote. Why is Africa not writing good history about ourselves? I'm telling you, in the next generation to come, if we don't take time, somebody, the, your great grandchildren will come and someone tell them to say, ah, that one, he was against all the whole prophets. All, all he did was just against church, against prophet, against God, against Jesus, against this, against that. They will believe it. Because no one is keeping record of the good thing that you did. This is where we are having that problem. I am saying, while we are saying T.B. Joshua did this, T.B. Joshua did that, we must also agree that he did so many good things. And we must actually concentrate on the good things. How about Gaddafi? Do you know what Gaddafi did in Libya? Gaddafi looked at all the things that has been happening here on earth against Africans. He said, I want Africa united. If you come to Nigeria, there is Gaddafi estate. If you go to Zambia at Longe Cast, there is Gaddafi estate. He used his money. He was developing countries. He wanted Africa to be united. They blasphemed him. They wrote a bad history about him and they killed him. Since they killed him, what, are, what is happening in Libya today? So while we are fighting this, our father in the Lord, Prophet T.B. Joshua, may we also look at the good things he did. Keep that record for generations to come. So that in the next generation, people will come and see Africa and say, oh, Africa, at least we did well. Africa, at least we woke up. Africa, oh, there is somebody that is called Prophet who helps people to share the truth. There is somebody like Sia One who helps people to, you know, we must, this is what we must do. It's very, very important. This angle is very, very important for you and for me and for the sake of the next generation to come. Mm. His daughter also came on the same documentary and she was also narrating her ordeals. Do you have any comment with regards to David Joshua's daughter? It's, it's not the out? daughter. It's not the daughter. And you know this how it's not it's not the daughter. No daughter can come a no daughter, eh? My brother, you don't understand blood. No daughter can agree to expose his father's nakedness like that. To me, as an African, you see, that's why we are missing it now. White people have infiltrated us that we don't understand culture again, culturally. No matter how bad my father is, I can never, even if he did it, I can never come in public and expose my father and shame my father like that. If I destroy my father's glory, I destroy myself. That's why I'm saying that joke is not T.B. Joshua's daughter. No daughter of a father can come in public like that and blaspheme the father like that. It can't be possible. In Africa, it's against our culture. It can't. How will you feel? Let me ask you, Prof. X, can you do that to your father? Say the truth. If my father disowned me, I can. <laughs> no. <laughs> you can't do that to your father. You, you Africa. Must you must understand the Africa. circumstances under which a joker is coming out to talk about the father. She was disowned. Her father disowned her. Because, because it's not the father. It's not. Let me tell you this. In Africa, in my culture, there is no way, no matter how bad my father is, I can never come in public and discredit him like that. I can't do it. You okay, see what is happening? Good, out of your good heart, Siawan, I want to ask you, you adopt someone from their infancy. You raised them until they are maybe 15 years old. And you realize that they are rebellious. Are you going to throw them away? Adopted. Yeah. Of course. You throw them away. Of course. <laughs> no, you are not just avoiding. 
<laughs> now you're just supporting TV, Joshua. But I know that, of course, was not legit. See, I want no, I'll I'll rephrase my question. I will throw them away. If today, if today you adopt a child who's maybe a month old, you raise this child, take this child to school, look after this child in, in the best way possible that you can. After 15 years, you realize that uh, maybe this child is naughty or this child is mischievous. Are you just going to make that abrupt decision and say, I don't want this child anymore? Send this child. I to will throw the child away before it's too late. <laughs> Why must you be rebellious? Is it not because of you that you people that read Bible? Is it not because of rebellious that a, a devil was thrown away from heaven? <laughs> eh? <laughs> Once eh? you try to do not, I throw you. Blood is different. That's why I was telling you. You see, if that was TBJ, she was blood. Hey, <laughs> she will protect the father. <laughs> So she's not. All these things, TBJ and BBC, we must look at this BBC guy and realize that they don't mean well for Africa. Nigeria is suffering today because of Britain. Many countries in Africa is suffering today because of colonialism. If you go to Congo today, Congo is suffering today because of white people. If you go to South Africa today, 90% of South African economy is in the hands of the whites. That's why Julius Malema is fighting. There is no, we are, no country you will mention and say white people mean well for the blacks here. If you shout praise the Lord in your church and the white man answer hallelujah, there is something is benefiting from you apart from prayer. When you go to America and you see a church led by a white man, you will see a lot and a lot of black people. But when you go to America and see a church led by a black man, you will see few white people there. White people don't believe in our ability. They don't believe in us. They don't believe that we can be great. They don't believe that we can achieve anything. And those few white people you will see in the, in the house, in the church of a black man, there is something they are benefiting. It's either they are working and they are being paid. That is how, how it is. The time we wake up and realize this, the better for us. I've done a lot of things with the whites. I've served them before. I do a lot of businesses with them. I can assure you, 90% of the things they say are lies. Recently, a vaccine for malaria was developed and they brought it to Cameroon to test it. Remember, when Corona was there, the vaccine was developed by World Health Organization. And the worst heat those days was America. Those vaccine was tested in Africa first. <laughs> you don't understand, my brother. But very soon, Africa will wake up. And when we wake up, we are going to embrace each other. That's why when you call me in your broadcast, I always make myself available because I love you. You may not love prophets or you may not love what prophets are doing, but so long as you are a black person, so long as I was invited by a black person, I will suspend whatever I'm doing and attend to it because I love you. We must love each other as black first. We must protect each other as blacks first. Then the rest will follow. Everything that they bring to us from the white community must not divide us. When they rise against our brother, we must rise and protect our brother. When they rise against our sister, we must rise and protect our sister. There is nothing, absolutely nothing good they have about us. Even if they come to me, let me tell you the truth, uh, my brother. Even if they come to me with evidence that a black man who was great 
committed the sin with the, with the evidence, I will still not believe it because they don't mean well for us. If they have written something good about us, the only person that white people honor and worship, only black person that they honor and worship is Mandela. That is why you see people from uh, you see people from Nigeria. At today is Nelson Mandela Day. They don't go to school because of Nelson Mandela that died in South Africa. How does Nelson Mandela consign us here in Nigeria? You see people worshiping Nelson Mandela in South Africa. You see people, Nelson Mandela, where people have, have met Nelson Mandela, like Nelson Mandela is, a, is the most perfect person on earth. Why? Because he favored the white. That's all. Tell me that thing that Nelson Mandela did in Africa that Kenneth Kaunda did not do in Zambia. Kenneth Kaunda was a father of liberation, not just for Zambia, but for many African nations. Do white people honor him? They cannot honor him because he did not allow them to stay in Zambia. Check your history. Kenneth Kaunda was fighting for Africa. But today, he's not respected in Africa. If you go on the street in, in, here in Nigeria, I ask people, who is Kenneth Kaunda? They, they don't know who Kenneth Kaunda is. But ask them, who is Nelson Mandela? Oh, our hero. Why? Because white people presented him to us as a hero. What did he do? He didn't do nothing. The people that fought for the liberation of South Africa in South Africa today are not honored because they refuse to be put in pockets by white people. After many years in prison, white people went to him and negotiated in prison and told him to say, when you come out, don't chase the whites. Embrace peace. Allow the whites to continue dominating. It is because of Nelson Mandela that white people are dominating in South Africa today. The banks are owned by South Africa. The mines are owned by South Africa. Today, even the lands are owned, uh, the banks are owned by the whites. Even the lands are owned by the whites. It's because of Nelson Mandela. They presented him to him because he betrayed the blacks. They presented him. Everybody was hey, hey, Mandela. Hey, Mandela. He was a betrayer. They told him, when you come, don't chase people. When you come, don't chase white people. If you agree, sign this document. We give you freedom. You go and become the president. He agreed and betrayed his people. And fine, South Africa don't have lands. When you see a, a black president like there, uh, uh, Sri Lamaposa there, it's just like a, a, a television. It's white people that remote control him. They tell him what to do. White people are still controlling South Africa. That's why today xenophobia can happen. They can kill millions of black people, but no white person will be killed. They can kill a Zimbabwean. They can kill a Nigerian. They can kill a Zambian. But no single white man is going to be killed. Go to all the whole nice places in South Africa. It's occupied by the whites. Cape Town is the headquarters of South Africa. As a black person self, you don't have a say there. In Africa, in our land. Why? Because Mandela came and Mandela betrayed us. Who is Mandela compared to Kenneth Kaunda? Kenneth, in fact, without Kenneth Kaunda, Mandela was going to be killed. But all of a sudden, Mandela has been made a hero above Kenneth Kaunda. Why? Because white people manipulated him. He came out and said, hey, my people, don't chase them. Let them stay. That decree he made was the reason why they are calling him a hero today. Tell me one thing that he did for Africa. So you can see the manipulation. The manipulation is not only in the Bible, it's in politics. It's everywhere. It's risk to believe a white person. That is my conclusion. Brother Siawan, thank you so much for embracing us on this particular episode. There's a lot to share. And uh, there are a lot of gold nuggets that you brought to the attention of our black African brothers and sisters. And I hope everyone 
will learn. We don't have to agree for us to be brothers. It is in these disagreements that we sharpen each other. Like what the Bible say, iron sharpens iron. I see so many people will be saying, ah, why would you have see a one or why would you engage with this particular subject? To me, when I see a black brother who has sense, when I see a black brother who has different schools of thoughts, like you for say, my brother, you're a true Af you know, pan-African, you have a different view of uh, you know, the black child in general. And uh, you remind me of so many of other, of my brothers that are there in Nigeria that also do not share the same belief that I believe, that also do not believe in Jesus Christ. But to me, I hold them dear because they have another sixth sense that reasons very, very well. It is these shallow believers that think if someone, you know, disagrees with you, you know, philosophically or ideologically, that person automatically becomes your enemy. I'm sure so many people have learned, and uh, to those who have been saying, I'm too one-sided on the TB Joshua subject, I think CR1 here has given you the other side to keep the conversation balanced. I appreciate you, my brother, for coming through, and I hope to host you again anytime soon, depending on your availability. But with that being said, I don't know if you have anything else to add on, or that's about I'm, I'm, I'm. it. I'm always here uh, to talk to you, Prof. X. I love you so much, and uh, we must keep loving ourselves. Uh, religion is not good for humanity. Uh, when you read the comments, you can see many people can see, I want thank you, I've opened our eyes. You can also see others to say, ah, see, I want is the devil. Why? Because I don't believe everything that is written in the Bible. Christians believe that they are doing the right thing. Muslims believe that they are doing the right. If you come to a house where there are in a house today in Nigeria, I don't know about South Africa or Zimbabwe where you are, you see a Roman Catholic member, a choosing member, deeper life member, winners member, they will not agree with each other. Each of them are saying, our own is the best. Our own is the best. But at the end of the day, we are all humans. We have to use our brain, whether Christian or Muslim. You must do the right thing. You, me, I don't condemn Muslim. I can never condemn Muslim. And I can never condemn anybody. I believe that if we work together, we are going to achieve great things here in Africa. Let's put religion away. Let's use our brain. Our brain. God has given us brain. Apart from religion, we, we are created with the brain. I told you, uh, 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 sorry to say this, From there, there is a culture from 1st of uh, January to the 31st of January. There are churches that do, uh, that do uh, 21 or 31 days fast. At the end of that fasting, the man of God tells you to bring all your salary as a first fruit. Now, you know that in, on, in Africa today, many people that have salary depend on their salary for a living. Without their salary, they will not eat. Without their salary, children will not go to school. And this is January, the toughest month of the year. No matter how you rich you are, January shakes everybody. Now, you, you speak to your people and say, give me all your salary. And because you have people that are brainwashed who believe that they can only go to heaven through their church, carry the whole salary and give to the man of God. The man of God out of that salary will buy a car, will buy jet, will build school, will build hotels. You yourself, hunger will kill you and kill your children. You yourself, your children will not go to school. Because you have given all your salary to the man of God. That is where your brain is needed. Oh, is it written in the Bible? Okay, it's there. But if I give it, if I give all these things, my children will not go to school. You have given all this salary. Your children are not going to school. But the children for your man of God are going to school. His wife is flourishing. Out of that money you gave on Sunday, you will see his wife wearing expensive clothes, expensive perfume 
coming to church. While you are in that church, you have not eaten. Hunger is killing you. Osa is killing you. That is where, and when I read the comments, when people say, ah, see, a one is a Lucifer. See, a one don't believe in Bible. I, I look at them, I laugh. For example, in my church, uh, the other Sunday, you know, where is here? I, I was about to use my phone to read comments and pray for people that were watching online. My phone went off. And there was my uh, one of the daughter uh, there that gave a testimony before I came to say she was given a brand new I, I, iPhone iPhone 15. And jokingly, when I was when that my phone went off, the battery died in at uh, the poopy. I said, Hey, where is that lady that gave testimony to say they gave her a phone? Tell that person that uh gave you phone to buy me a phone also because my phone has spoiled i cannot be able to read people's comments in church again do you know what that my daughter said she said oh no papa take this new one that they gave to me i thought it was a joke on monday she called my chief security say ah where are you come and get the iphone for papa can you see how venerable our followers are they can be cheated easily so when I look at it, I have like about three or four phones. And that phone that went off in church does not have a problem. It's just that the battery died. I've come home, I've charged the battery. I don't need the phone. I told her, no, 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 I was joking. I don't need the phone. When I came back, I realized to say, ah, so this is how venerable these people are. If I wanted that phone, I would have collected it. Somebody can walk to a man of uh, drive to a man of God with a car. Say, man of God, I have a problem. My business is not going well. The man of God has already four cars, five cars. Say, God told me that if you give me that your car, your business will go well. Because they are venerable. Because they have been brainwashed by the Bible. They will give that one car they have to the man of God that already has four cars or five cars and start walking. Your business is going to die now because when you need the transaction, you need to drive. You cannot drive anymore because you have given your car to the man of God. I feel sorry for Africa, uh, Prof. X, and I, I, I promise you, uh, please, always invite me. Uh, I'm ready to use your platform as much as I'm using my platform. To open people's eyes. Maybe things can change before our generation is wiped out. We have a lot of work to do, my brother. And you know, your message is very powerful. If people would would listen to it without uh, applying filters in their ears, because it speaks right to the conscience of a, of a black African. It speaks right to the conscience of you know an African believer or if I should just say Christian believers. Sometimes I also ask myself the same question. How did they get to be this you know, vulnerable or gullible? And how did we even get here? Is it because we really love to go to heaven? Because I'm sure the end goal of all sacrifices is to reach heaven. But if logic is to be applied, if the man that is promising you heaven really cares about that very same heaven, it doesn't. Why would he want to gather <laughs> material want to things here on earth? Why would he want to surround himself with all these luxurious material, uh, uh, you know, things? Uh, so it's a, you know, it's a struggle. But you know, we'll keep putting more volume to you, some of your ideas, and we'll keep putting more volume and emphasis on the liberation of our African people. A day is coming. We might not be the beneficiaries of what we are doing today, but our children's children will come into a better world. I'm sure all these gullibility manipulations will have no effect on the generations that are yet to come. My brother, I appreciate you so much. We'll keep Thank in touch. You. I'll get in touch and uh, we'll always host you to share some of your beliefs and ideas about how we can move Africa forward. Because at the end of the day, we really want our people to progress. We really want our Thank continent you. to flourish. Thank and we'll you. probably engage as well in political discourses, because that's one another, one major aspect that affects our people. And I'm sure you are very much, you know, 
knowledgeable in that respect as well. So many people say that if it wasn't for CR1, HH could not have become the president. CR1 fought <laughs> a very good fight to, to, to remove uh, Edgar. Is it Edgar Kalung or something like that? Edgar, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So those kind of situations that you were involved in Zambia, they are almost in each and every other country. But like you said earlier, if we come together, work together, as African children, we can achieve great. When more hands are put together, we can you know, bring more results that are beneficial to our people. Thank you so much, my brother. I appreciate you. you. Have a beautiful day and enjoy the rest of it. Me, I'm out. Prophecy 1 is out.